On this isolated stretch of beach, 25 miles north of Santa Barbara, California, two people were savagely murdered 48 years ago in June of 1963. It was a beautiful summer day. The winds and surf were light on that fourth day of June. Robert George Dominguez and Linda Faye Edwards were two days away from their high school graduation. Bobby turned 18 on May 12th of that year, and Linda was three days shy of her 18th birthday. They were murdered on what was an unofficial senior ditch day at their high school. The person who killed them has never been arrested or identified. My goal in making this film is to keep their memory alive. My hope is that someone who views this film may have a key piece of information and will contact the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department with the evidence that will lead to the identification of the killer of this couple. Robert George Dominguez was born in Lompoc, California on May 12, 1945. The Dominguez families were ranchers and were prominent members of the community. They lived in the Drum Canyon area east of Lompoc. Bobby's father, Mr. George Hutch Dominguez, was well respected in the region. Bobby had one brother named Frank and two sisters named Laura and Leona. Bobby distinguished himself as a football player for the Lompoc Senior High School team. His junior and senior year, he played guard and wore number 68. He could rightly be called a star on the football team. He also served as the vice president of the Future Farmers of America his senior year in high school. He received many awards for his vocational agricultural skills. Their graves are marked with the date they were found, June 5, 1963. Bobby was popular and dated a young lady who moved to Lompoc about three years earlier. Linda Faye Edwards was born in Denver, Colorado on June 7, 1945. She and her family moved to Lompoc in January of 1961. She lived at 421 North L Street, Apartment C, with her mother, Mrs. Eva Edwards, and an older sister. She had another older sister who lived in Denver. She and Bobby reported that they planned to marry in 1963. They seemed to always be together. Like Bobby, she was active in many social activities. I was a sophomore at Lompoc Senior High School the year that Bobby and Linda were seniors. My name is John Averett. I played junior varsity football in the fall of 1962 while Bobby completed his senior year of play. Bobby played guard and wore number 68. I played guard and wore number 68, the same, the same number, only as a junior varsity player. That's where the similarities ended. He started every game and was a great player. I was only average. Bobby was one of the only varsity players that took time to reach out to us younger players. He would give his younger linemen pointers. I was injured, injured while playing that year and, it, and spent a week in the hospital. The day I got out of the hospital, I had two visitors, my coach and Bobby Dominguez. He only stopped by the house for a few minutes, but it really meant a lot to me. After the football season that year, we kept in touch. He wrote in my annual. You can't see the writing now. It's faded. But he wrote something like, 
hang in there next year and don't let Coach Leck give you a bad time. Bob Leck was the varsity football coach. We all respected him. The day Bobby wrote those words, Linda was with him. She took my annual and flipped over to the page where her powder puff football photo was. She printed her name on, on her shoulder. That was the last time I talked to them. A few weeks later, they were murdered. We were all devastated. How two good people could be so brutally murdered right on this spot and the killer not be caught was something we could not understand. We all followed the case on a day-by-day -day basis, but there was no word on the killer. I'd been to the place where they were killed a few times before the murders in the late summer of 1962, but we were all forbidden by our parents to go anywhere on the beach without lifeguards after the killings. I attended their high school graduation. It was held outside at the high school stadium. It was very sad. There were empty chairs for Bobby and Linda with wreaths in their honor. I also attended Bobby's funeral on Saturday, June the 8th. The FFA members were pallbearers and most of the football team was there. It was a very sad occasion indeed. Linda was buried the next Monday. They were both buried at Lompoc's Evergreen Cemetery, where you can see their graves today. You may recall the summer of 1963 was when Martin Luther King delivered his I Have a Dream speech. It was a troubled time in this country. I checked the newspaper every time it came out for a story on the murders that summer. After a few days, there was none. I often asked the coach if he heard anything. He had no answers. As of the fall, the attention of everyone drifted to other matters. Then on November 22, 1963, as I sat in class one morning, the world changed for everyone. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. For a second time, the details of death seemed impossible to clarify. With all the resources of law enforcement and the federal government, the nation could not get a clear answer as to what happened. I was watching the live TV the next Sunday morning when Jack Ruby shot Lee Harvey Oswald to death. Then we had a new president, and the country moved on. No one seemed to be very concerned about Bobby and Linda anymore. Information about Bobby and Linda's murders seemed to fall into the abyss. The next year brought no new information. I graduated two years after the murders in 1965 and moved east to attend college. I eventually completed two doctor's degrees and became a psychologist. Later I became a police officer. I've studied criminals, including serial killers, and work to be sure that those who violate the law face consequences of their actions. All of my adult life I've never forgotten Bobby and Linda. I often tried to find information about Bobby and Linda after I left California. I asked my mom when I visited home or when I spoke with her by phone. She told me Bobby, Bobby's father died in 1971 but no word on the killer. Later, when internet searches developed, I attempted searches without success. Finally, on February 20, 2004, I typed just Bobby and Linda's last names in the search engine and found an amazing site on Zodiac Murders, ZodiacKiller.com. It was about 10 o'clock at night, and I stayed up all night that night reading about my two friends. The next evening I sent an email to Tom Voigt, the man who started and maintains the site, expressing my gratitude to him and to Bill Baker, the retired Santa Barbara detective who worked Bobby and Linda's murders from 1972 until his retirement in 1991, for the amazing information contained there. My memories were poor on details of even the location of the murders. I had not been to the scene in 42 years since my last visit as of the date of the summer of 1962. But it slowly clarified, I encourage you to go to the website and learn about Bobby and Linda, as well as the other victims or possible victims of the Zodiac Killer.